Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today, kinda late, but I'm talking about the new album from Kenny Chi, Mobius Strip. Alright, I finally get to talk about this techno legend from Japan again. A little over three years ago, I reviewed this guy's 1995 album Jelly Tones, completely out of context, without having heard any of his other projects in full, it had been requested quite a lot at the time, and that was back before I had Patreon or my audience was big enough that requests came in too quickly for me to keep up with. But yeah, I thought that album was pretty solid. And the guy's wider back catalog seemed intriguing to me and the kind of thing I felt I should be sitting down with. Since then, I have sat down with all of Kenny G's other albums and soaked them all up. And let me tell you, I've grown to absolutely love this guy's work. He does have a fairly light-hearted brand of melodic but still hard-hitting techno, kind of building his own lane in the genre that can't really be mistaken for anyone else. All his albums have had their own flavor separate from each other, too. This guy is super underrated, and not enough people talk about him. When I saw that I missed a new album he just came out with right at the end of 2019, I thought, screw it, this guy deserves a more in-depth video. I'm gonna cover him anyways, if for nothing else than for the In Brief segment. So how about we just get into that? I will warn you only a couple of albums of his are available to listen to on Spotify, basically just Jelly Tone, Sunriser, Tayo, and this new one. I had to seek out unofficial uploads for the other ones unfortunately, but it is what it is. I'll now go down his studio album discography so far, not counting other projects under aliases like Flare or others like that, but still quite a bit to cover. <laughs> This is his debut. Unfortunately, not nearly as interesting as most of his stuff afterwards, and not easy to find either. But I keep it around since it does have a more muted and subtle feel to it that none of his other albums really have, and I like his catalog having more variety. It's probably not essential, kind of falls in the background for me more often than not, but it's still pretty cool. But okay, this is where the good stuff starts. Basically, my opinion of this album is the same as when I reviewed it. Really fun and lighthearted IDM techno thing that kind of follows the artificial intelligence formulas in some ways, but kind of does its own thing too. I compared it to Speedy J's Ginger, and that is still apt. Still did not really prepare me for what was to come in his catalog though. <laughs> Hearing this project for the first time made me view Kenny Shi much more highly than I did before. Not because it's particularly incredible by itself, but because it's so damn weird. <laughs> It's like this big beat, breakbeat influenced album that was so much more in your face with lots of punchy horn stabs and guitars, an attempt at sounding American by an artist from Japan. And it's completely ridiculous, in the best way. I took it as like jokey and tongue in cheek, but not in the bad on purpose satire way, like it's just a lot of silly lighthearted fun that still tried to be compelling music. It showed me that not only was he not afraid to not take himself too seriously and that he had a sense of humor, but that he wasn't one-dimensional as a producer and could take weird risks. Jelly Tones is still probably more enjoyable, but this was still a ton of fun and did much more for my respect of him as an artist. This, though, this has to be my favorite album of his. Brought in some pretty prominent jazz elements, and they all work seamlessly into his trademark techno grooves. It's danceable and energetic, and heavily textured and evocative. He works in guest appearances from DJ Spooky, Talvin Singe, and Co-Fusion. And there's not a single weak track in the bunch! Coming together in an experience you can't get anything else like in the world of techno. Absolutely do not sleep on it. Pun intended. You want an album full of his most pure bangers, though? Look no further than here. Ton of hard-hitting, percussive, and grooving, straightforward techno, though has plenty of time for melodies and one track with a string quartet and Rhodes piano solos. Lots of fun to be had here. This one is admittedly not quite as interesting as the previous handful of projects, at least from a textural standpoint. It's kind of plain and straightforward techno with no twists for the most part, very much front-loaded too, with most of its best stuff in the first half and then kind of trailing off afterwards. But honestly, this held up much better than I remembered. Still lots of great grooves and bass lines, and still recognizable as his style. This one though, this was one of the big keeper ones. Still mostly straightforward stuff like Future and Light, but with more texture, better melodies, more interesting song identities, and just far better overall consistency. Probably my second favorite project of his behind Sleeping Madness, and the one that probably best exemplifies his core appeal and style. Definitely some essential listening here. Well, uh, this one starts with a badass down-tempo jazz cover of Mr. Finger's Can You Feel It, 
So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> the rest of this project is more fun and groovy deep house with quite a few jazzy flares. A bit more laid back than usual from him, but I'm always going to enjoy a project that sounds like this. So yeah, this, this was really nice. And I suppose this collab with Mark Romboy is counted as a main studio album. It is one of the easiest projects with his name on it to actually find. But I think unfortunately of his main studio albums, this has to be my least favorite. It's not bad, it's some decent Detroit techno-y stuff which has its moments, I guess, but it's just not particularly interesting. If you hadn't told me Kenny Shi was involved, I wouldn't have been able to guess. Which brings us to here. It's been quite a while since we got a new project from this guy. Tayo came out all the way back in 2013. Needless to say, when I saw that he had a new project this past November, I basically dropped everything and went out to pick it up immediately. Took a while to actually get to it, but you know, I only found out it existed like a few weeks ago. <laughs> Here we have his first new project in several years, with a couple of guest features from Jeff Mills, as well as two artists I'd never heard of, uh, Dosem and Gohiyama. I was excited to get into this. Ishii has a pretty damn solid track record, and has yet to give me the indication that this wouldn't at least be a fun ride. Even knowing Tayo was a disappointment, it's basically his only miss so far. So, yeah, what did we get with Mobius Strip? Well, the good news is that it is up to par with his usual track record. It's a good, solid album that follows the stylings you'd hope for out of Kenny Shi. I guess the bad news is that it kinda reads to me as a bit of a rehash of projects like Sunriser and Future and Lights. It doesn't really do anything I hadn't heard Ishii do before or reveal any new dimension to his work. And as such, I don't think I would qualify it as great. But it's enjoyable in all the same ways as his older stuff and still easily recognizable as his work, so I won't complain too much. It's a good album, and if you're a fan of the guy like I am, then you'll like this project too. So, individual tracks. Well, there's not a lot to analyze here, actually. <laughs> I mean, you got tracks like the opener, Bells of New Life, which has his usual techno beats and bright triumphant melodies. It's a nice mood booster to start you out. There are other tracks in a kind of similar mold to this one. Chaos Theory is structured the same way, though has a more intense and driving chord progression. Green Flash and Blood Moon, both with Dosem, are somewhere in between those two. All really fun tracks. This album is insanely sounding either, though. Take No Prisoners with Jeff Mills is kind of more thumping and less melody-centric. Sounds kind of like something from Tayo, but it's, it's better in this context, in a more sonically varied album. Definitely cool to see these two legends teaming up, although I kind of prefer the other Jeff Mills collab on here, Quantum Teleportation is this weirder and more experimental atonal ambient piece with tons of layers of random bleeping that is very much a welcome addition and has some great build-up and atmosphere, even a second half with some more metallic rhythms and barely present ghostly melodies. There are other cool, more experimental moments on here. Uh, the track Silent Disorder with Gokiyama goes through like three different vaguely creepy minimal techno phases with this one middle part that has lots of random percussion flying all over the place. Prism has all these cascading glassy chords going up against other strange textures and jangly, vaguely jazzy percussion. Vector 1 has all these absolutely beautiful melodic cascades that sound incredible. Despite being an interlude, that's one of the biggest highlights for me. Not to say this album is all hits with no misses. The other two Vector interludes aren't nearly as interesting or evocative as the first one. And there's a couple of more atonal tracks like Skew Lines and Polygraph, which just kind of sit there and do keep up a solid foot-tapping groove, but don't really do much to grab my attention. Also, this album's closer, Acceleration, is disappointingly lacking in interesting development. The wobbly melody on that one's kind of grating, too. Unfortunately, it's probably my least favorite track in the bunch. Though even that one's not that bad, it does, it does bang. <laughs> For what it's worth, I'm not even sure if it's properly meant to be the album's real ending. Like, on the physical versions of this album, from what I see, the, the album ends on the track Like a Star at Dawn, which feels a lot more like a real closer than Acceleration does. A lot more melody and triumphant build-up and payoff, and more emotionally satisfying, it's even the longest track in the bunch. That's one of the best tracks here, of course. I guess Blood Moon and Acceleration are more like bonus tracks, and I can live with that. Even if Blood Moon was easily good enough to be on the main album, and honestly could be a closer just as well, but whatever. That's basically all I got on Mobius Strip. Is it among the best Kenny she's ever done? No, not really. Uh, I think it's roughly on par with Future and Light. 
Got a lot of great moments, but also a bunch of forgettable ones too. It's a bit of a mixed bag that probably ran on longer than it needed to, and the whole thing does kind of fall into the background pretty easily, just in general. But the good here definitely outweighs the bad. And overall, I had fun with it. As always, Kenny He is an artist that people should not be sleeping on. Not totally sure if this is necessarily the best possible starting point to go into his work, but if it is your starting point, you do still get a good idea on what his style is all about, and a solid taste of the kind of versatility that he can usually show. It's still a Kenny He album at the end of the day, and a pretty enjoyable one at that. It's, a, it's a worth a shot. I think I'm overall feeling a 7.3 out of 10 on this. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're awesome people. You want to add yourself to that list or make me your views something, the link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.